Hello everyone. Welcome to yet another episode of The Living Waters and we are continuing with our series on the attributes of God. Psalm 103 verse 19 says the Lord has established his throne in the heavens. By way of introduction let me quote two of my favorite preachers Stephen Lawson and Charles Spurgeon. Lawson says about the sovereignty of God. Let me quote This is the bedrock doctrine of all doctrines. This is the immovable mountain of God's supreme authority in his right to exercise his sovereignty. Sovereignty of God is his absolute active continual reign of the heavens and the earth and hell itself by the free exercise of his supreme right with unhindered unrivaled majesty. And Spurgeon says there is no attribute more comforting to his children than that of God's sovereignty under the most adverse circumstances in the most severe trials they believe that sovereignty has ordained their afflictions they believe that sovereignty overrules them and that sovereignty will satisfy them god is sovereign means he is lord when god revealed to moses his name as yahweh translated as lord in our bibles he wanted moses to realize that god is lord and pharaoh is not even in egypt god is lord and we see in the bible the word lord coming over over 7000 times as the name of god and also as the name of our lord jesus christ the applications of this this very important attribute of god touches all aspects of theology and life but but we shall limit uh, ourselves to looking into three among them uh, right now number 1 God is sovereign over the universe. As R.C. Sproul says, there is not a single maverick molecule in the universe, a molecule that does, doesn't move or have its its being under the authority of God. Everything outside of God came into being out of nothing and it was an exercise of of the sovereign will of God in creation. When God said let there be light there was light the universe is not run by a democracy but a theocracy he not only was sovereign over the work of creation but but also over, over history and providence history is his story he is the king of kings proverbs 21:1 says the king's heart is in the hand of the lord like the river of water he turns it wherever he wishes i say a 46 uh, 9 through to 11 says remember the former things of old for i am god there is no other i am god and there is none like me declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times things not yet uh, not yet done saying my counsel shall stand and i will accomplish all my purposes calling a bird of prey from the east the man of my uh, the man of my counsel from afar i have spoken and i will bring to pass i have purposed and i will do it god stands at the beginning of all things and declare, declares all the way to the end he declares he ordains everything all the way to the very end he ordains all that will come to pass from beginning to the end and all that is in between god is sovereign over all of history number 2 god is sovereign over suffering deuteronomy 32 was 13 and says see now that i even i am he and there is no god beside me i kill and i make alive i wound and i heal and there is none that i can deliver out of my hand that can deliver out of my hand this verse talks about god a god who kills and a god who makes alive god who wounds and a god who heals psalm 105:16 says god summoned a famine on the land and broke all supply of bread and the very next verse says makes it very clear that it was god himself who sent joseph as a slave 
before hand to Egypt what happened to joseph life was not plan b of god in response to some some suffering that that happened in his life no it was always plan a and god only has a plan a joseph knew this and that's why in genesis 52 he says you meant evil against me but god meant it for good and it is primarily in the context of suffering we need to understand roman romans 8:28 which says god causes all things to work together for our good and number 3 god is sovereign over our salvation again romans 8:29 to 30 says for those whom he foreknew he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and those whom he predestined he also called and those whom he called he also justified and those whom he justified he also glorified Ephesians chapter 1 when Paul Paul writes about our spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus we read in verse 4 he chose us in him before the foundations of the world that we should be holy and blameless before him he chose us by himself for himself before the foundations of the world means none other than god himself uh, was behind the choice certainly i was not there to counsel god verse 5 says he predestined us to uh, to himself as sons through jesus christ according to the purpose of his will to the praise of his grace God's reason for choosing us predestining us was his love for us nothing nothing in us and the ultimate purpose behind all of this is the praise of his glorious grace the praise of his glorious grace praise of his glory what a loving truth is this what a comforting truth what a humbling truth i am not in control the prime minister nor the president is in control bad luck is not in control good luck is not in control but god reigns god reigns he is yahweh he is lord